Hello everyone and welcome to Brain Seeds. Today we're gonna to be doing a special Memorial Day treat. We're gonna be going over this recently finished uh, cornhole table and we're gonna put a unique finish on it to make it your own. It's a great game for friends and family. You're gonna use it all the time. So why not make it your own and have a nice personal unique touch added on to it. You don't wanna miss it, so stay right there. So the first thing you're going to want to do is keep in mind that this is recently done. This has been sanded, but it's going to have a uh, sand dust residue on that and you don't want to put any um, polyurethane or uh, paint or anything. You don't want to put anything on that until you get this dust off. So what I like to use is this blue shop rag roll here because it doesn't leave anything behind. No linen, no... Um, uh, none of the linen and, and little cotton balls or anything that like that um, Paper towel is gonna rip and catch and leave little bits around, but this stuff is pretty nice So then you just take your hose like such and dampen Doesn't really matter if you soak it through or not because we are gonna wring it out and this is going to give us a nice level of dampness. We don't want it soaked because we don't want our stuff, our table to take forever to dry. So we're going to take this and just with a nice dampness, not too wet, not too dry, go end to end and collect that loose sawdust. Also, if you have compressed air, that's what I would use. Um, even the uh, can air that you get from the store for like cleaning computers, like that will work too. Um, or if you have a compressor tank, compressed air will work great to get that off. But um, I don't have that on me right now, so the damp cloth works just fine. One way you can tell if it's totally uh, free of dust is with a damp hand you can actually uh, just pat on the table and lift up and check your hand. If it's clean, you're good to go. If it's not, hit it again. And now that it's clean, before we get started on anything else, uh, you should probably know that you should take your legs off, before, not off your body, but off the table, and uh, never rip your own legs off your body that is bad but yeah what you want to do is get this off because you could just mask around there but i rather just paint thoroughly through there and not have to worry about it so you just remove the bolt uh, mine has wing nuts so it's pretty easy to take off just slide it out and slide the leg off and uh so I know you can pretty much do anything you want to these tables. It's all personal preference, um, but you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna get a uh, polyacrylic here by Minwax. I like the water-based because the oil base can take forever to dry. So that's a little quicker there. Um, we got, oh, he's rolling away. We got, uh, some red paint because my bags are black and red and I got some nice dark wood stain. So I'm gonna use some contrast and there you go. I'm gonna use some contrast and keep the natural finish of the wood and just do the clear on that and have the nice dark stain. You'll see, it's gonna be awesome. And here's a neat little trick. If you don't want to get paint on your totes, which why would you? All I did was put, you can put anything under there, but a, a paper plate works great. It fits perfect. And uh, you don't have to worry about getting a mess. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to find the center of this board. So we have to know what the total width is. So the width of this one is 24 inches. 
So that gives us a center of 12 inches. So you can do any design you want to on these things. The possibilities are endless, but on this design, I'm going to find the 12 inches and I'm going to mark the hole and then put the edge of the tape there and then run that tape down to the corner of the table. Now, just because I chose to do this design doesn't mean that you know you have to. You can lay out this tape in any type of way that you want to. Now some people even like to do vertical stripes along the side edge and that looks really cool too. Now just take a moment and look over your board and make sure it looks pretty even like you have it lined up at the hole down to the corner edge on both sides and that it overall looks symmetrical. Then you want to grab yourself a card out of your wallet and go over the tape uh, going with the grain. Always go with the grain when doing stuff like this. You want to use the short uh, side of the card so you get more uh, stability and more pressure down onto the tape and press it into the wood as good as you can get it because you don't want any bleeding through. Now what I'm gonna go with is a nice apple red, natural finish here, and then on the triangle, a dark walnut. With the light color here and the dark color here, it's gonna give us a nice contrast pop. Now, when putting this on, you wanna make sure that the humidity levels are good. Read the directions on the back of whatever brand you purchase and see what they recommend. You can pretty much put down a coat on this and let it set for uh, one to three minutes. The longer you let it set, the more color is going to adhere and soak into the wood. And then you simply wipe it off. Uh, you apply it with this nice uh, synthetic bristle brush. Get one of those for about a dollar or two or more. Once again, I recommend these blue shop rags for the wiping. They don't leave any of the crap behind. So I take the brush and I'm going to brush with the grain along the tape. I like to do along the tape first because that sets up my borders and then the middle just becomes something that I fill in. But make sure that you go with the grain the entire time. Don't do any of that Karate Kid wax on wax off type of stuff. Now with doing this dark color and keeping the natural finish where the tape is, we're gonna really get a nice pop in contrast. I know I keep saying that, but that's very key anytime you're laying out a, a color combo or anything. So now we have, so now I have the coat completely on. It's been sitting for a couple minutes. So I'm gonna take a blue shop rag and I'm gonna wipe with the grain and get all of the access off. Now this is actually looking pretty good here. And here's the primer that I chose to use. You're gonna to wanna to prime the wood before you put on your paint because it's raw wood and it's going to soak up all of your paint and you'll just get a, a better result with primer. It'll stick better and everything. So I'm gonna treat this like a cookie and frosting treat from the 90s and I'm gonna dunk a roux this guy. I'm gonna dump them, I'm gonna dab them and stare at it because I'm doing way too much stirring and dunking here and you don't need to do this. Don't do what I'm doing. Don't worry about your B-roll and just start applying the primer with the flow of the grain. You wanna go with the grain. Right here, I should be painting away from the tape right now. I don't know why I made that mistake, but it's best to make all your brush directions go away from the tape so you're not trying to direct the primer underneath it. And then you have your tape 
hanging off the edge, which you can just grab a, an X-Acto knife or a carpenter's knife or whatever. Get yourself a razor blade and cut this thing off like such. And nice clean cut there. And then apply your primer to the end. You can tape there. I just grab a smaller brush and apply it by hand. I think you can get just as good of a result by doing it with just your hands than using the tape. Just take your time and you know you get a pretty good looking board here all primered all stained. Then we want to take our 400 grit and wipe with the grain going away from the tape to smooth out all the primer and get out all the little splinters that want to poke up and then take a dry brush and dust it off and get down to a nice finish and then apply your red paint over that going away from the tape like I am here and get your outline done with that and then just go over the whole thing doing nice and even strokes try not to get any runs then to get into my special design I chose to do a Deadpool face or a Deadpool logo I should say so I'm going three inches up from the edge of the table and then I'm gonna find the center the 12 inch mark and I'm gonna mark that then I'm going to take the uh, poly finish that we chose to use and I'm going to use that for my perfect circle for the logo right now I'm just going to measure from side to side and make sure that it's all centered up and looks good so now I'm going to just draw a thin line outlining this can using it as a stencil for our Deadpool logo and bam there it is just hand drew this out real quick uh, it only takes a second it's not a very hard drawing uh, gonna do the eyes in white acrylic you're gonna want to use a fine tip brush for the eyes and something like a this angled brush here to do the red outline part of the logo and there it is pretty much done Make sure you do a few coats to get it to pop. I also took a fine brush and did some black outline around the eyes just to give them a little bit more of a wow factor. And now we're going to peel away the tape and see how we did with this bleeding through. You don't want to go crazy with this. You want to take your time. There's no rush to get the paint off or the tape off, I mean. and just make sure that you're not taking anything up with it except for the tape. There's one side down. Now I got both sides. Here's both tables looking really good. And then now is the time that everybody's been waiting for putting on the clear coat. Now with this, you pretty much just want to make sure that you don't over brush because the more you brush it, the cloudier it will end up drying and you can get little air bubbles in and it'll just give you a, a finish that just isn't up to par. You want it to end up looking like glass when it's done. Now you're not going to get that result from the first coat so you're going to have to do uh, at least two to three. Here it is completely done with the first coat looking pretty good what I did was broke it up into four different sections with long easy flowing strokes is what you want to do all right so now I got four coats of finish on this looking really good uh, when the Sun hits it you get that nice shine and, and this really highlights around Deadpool's eyes. Now we're gonna go on to 
putting on this handle, you gotta pick your board up and find where the pivot point is for the weight because you have extra weight down here with the hardware, the legs and, and whatnot. So I found out that about 20 inches will get me to the center of my handle and I marked my holes, did a pilot hole, put these long screws in. I got this from the store. It's just a regular utility handle. Um, looks pretty good. Picked it up nice and solid. Now we're gonna go on and put these on the opposite side so that your finish stays nice and brand new. You can rest this right down on the ground. Super duper. You just wanna measure them out and have one on each corner, nice and even, and biggity bam. Here we have our gliders on, our nickel plated gliders. Nice and even on that end, and nice and even down here too. And what's great about this is they actually protrude a little bit, so you get clearance from your hardware that hold your legs on. So, pretty awesome, they work great. Like so, look at how good those look as a pair. Freaking great gift for somebody, or you can just have cool stuff stored away in your garage. You can never have too many toys, am I right? And that is how you get a killer, literally, because it's Deadpool, killer cornhole table set. If you like this video and you enjoyed the content and you want more creative content coming up, I cover a lot of different stuff. So consider hitting that like and subscribe button and I will see you next time.